The galaxy, a collection of stars, dust, and gas bound together by gravity. There are three different types of galaxies. The first among them are spiral galaxies, such as our own Milky Way and Andromeda, or M81, shown in this picture up above. Spiral galaxies have a big bulge in the center and spiral arms. Spiral arms are made up of gas, dust, and new stars that have formed into these dense regions of gas and dust. Elliptical galaxies are the second type of galaxy we are studying. Elliptical galaxies are usually round or oval, but some are flat, but not as flat as spiral galaxies. Elliptical galaxies have stopped making new stars about 10 billion years ago. They are among the largest galaxies in the universe, containing up to 5 trillion stars. Evidence suggests that many elliptical galaxies form by merging smaller galaxies together. Irregular galaxies are our last ones, which have no definite shape. They can contain from 10 million stars to several billion stars. They form new stars slowly, and some form when galaxies collide. Shown above is the large Magellanic clouds. A star is a large mass of hot gases emitting energy waves. The waves are mostly light, which result from a nuclear reaction inside the star. The outside of the star is made up of a layer of hot gases, the photosphere surrounded by what looks like a ring of light, corona, and then an outflowing stream of particles, solar wind. Scientists only have a vague idea of what, of of what is inside the star, which they think contains layers, increasing in density and temperature until the core is reached, where there are thermonuclear reactions. A star has five main characteristics. One, brightness, which astronomers describe in terms of magnitude or luminosity. Two, color. Three, surface temperature. Four, size. Five, mass, amount of matter, and these characteristics are related to one another in a complex way. Color depends on surface temperature, and brightness depends on surface temperature and size. Mass affects the rate at which a star of any given size produces energy, and so affects the surface temperature. To make all these relationships easier to understand, astronomers developed a graph called the HR diagram. This graph, which also helps astronomers understand and describe the life cycle of stars. When you look up into the sky on a clear night, you may have tried to count the stars, but there are so many you probably gave up. In our galaxy, the Milky Way, there are hundreds of billions of stars. Among them are our sun. The sun, Latin Sol, a yellow dwarf, is, near the, is the star at the center of our solar system. The Earth and other matter, including planets, asteroids, meteorites, comets, and dust, orbit the sun which by itself accounts for about 98.6% of the solar system's mass. The mean distance from the Sun to Earth is approximately 149,600,000 kilometers, or 92,960,000 miles, and its light travels this distance in about 8 minutes and 18 seconds. Energy from the Sun, in the form of sunlight, supports almost all life on Earth via photosynthesis, and drives the Earth's climate and weather. The surface of the Sun consists of hydrogen, about 74% of its mass, or 92% of its volume, helium, about 24% of its mass, and 7% of its volume, and other trace quantities of other elements, such as iron, nickel, oxygen, silicone, sulfur, magnesium, carbon, neon, calcium, and chromium. The Sun has a spectral class of G2V, G2 means that it has a surface temperature of approximately 5,780 K, 5,580 Celsius, giving it a white color that often, because of atmospheric scattering, appears yellow when seen from the surface of the Earth. It is this scattering of light at the blue end of the spectrum that gives the surrounding sky its color. When the sun is low in the sky, even more light is scattered, so the sun often appears orange or even red. travel in space, you should be able to measure interplanetary distances. 
one way that scientists measure distances in space is by using an AU or astronomical unit. An AU is the average distance between the Sun and the Earth, approximately 150 million kilometers. Another way to measure distance in space is by using the speed of light. Light travels at around 300,000 kilometers per second in space. Thus, in one second, light has traveled 300,000 kilometers. In one minute, light travels nearly 18 million kilometers. This distance is called a light minute. Light from the sun to the earth takes 8.3 minutes to travel. So the distance from earth to the sun, or 1 AU, is 8.3 light minutes. Distance in the solar system can be measured in light minutes and in light hours as well. The universe is full of light, and this is made possible because of its primary source of light and energy, stars. This is because stars can give off their own light and give off their own energy. So now, when you look up at the universe and wonder how come it's so full of light, you, can, you now know the answer. It's because of stars. There are many objects in our solar system. The solar system consists of the sun, those celestial objects balanced by gravity, the eight planets, the five dwarf planets, and there are 173 known moons, and billions of small bodies. The small bodies include asteroids, icy Kuiper belt objects, comets, meteoroids, and interplanetary dust, and man-made objects, such as space junk. The eight planets include Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All of these planets have smaller orbiting objects called moons, such as our moon, the moon. In the context of spaceflight, a satellite is an object which has been placed into orbit by human endeavor. Such objects are sometimes called artificial satellites to distinguish them from natural satellites such as the moon. Lastly, we have meteoroids, which are small sand to boulder sized pieces of debris in the solar system, asteroids, small solar system bodies in orbit around the sun, and comets, small solar system bodies that orbit the sun and when close enough to the sun exhibit a visible tail. Shown above is a meteor shower. 